Hi everyone, Bruce here at eTrailer. Today we're going to take a look at and install the Tucson Trailer Sway Control System. You may be asking yourself, why do I need a Trailer Sway Control System, or just wondering why anybody would need one. Well, if you've ever towed a bigger trailer like the one behind me, you can get sway from wind coming across the highway and cause that trailer to sway. And then you end up having to reach down and hit your manual brake controller to stop that sway from happening. Now, with this system, all you do is when you do hook it up, it's going to do all that on its own. As soon as it senses the trailer start to sway, it will control that by either doing the left side brakes or the right side brakes. If your hitch is not rated for weight distribution, this unit is a great choice for you. The reason that is, is it's all automatic. It does not interfere with your brake controller or you just using your brake pedal. So what this actually does is if it senses the trailer swaying from one side to the other, it'll know probably before you ever do, and it's gonna go ahead and lightly put the brakes on whichever side it needs to, to stop that sway. Before you can even think about reaching down to your manual brake controller and trying to stop that sway, it'll already be done. Another great feature of the unit is it will automatically disable itself when you're in off-road or rough conditions. So you don't have to worry about it constantly braking when you're going over rough bumps or speed bumps or something like that. It won't actually do any braking for you. Now, that doesn't mean that your brakes, when you hit the brake in your tow vehicle, that the brakes aren't working. It just means it's gonna shut itself off from controlling sway. And it's the only sway control solution for fifth wheels and gooseneck trailers. Now, it does come with a LED that um, basically tells you the status of the module, which is located right here. Now, you can mount this anywhere you want. You can mount it on the bulkhead of your camper so you could actually see it from your rear view mirror or your side mirrors. But we opted not to do that. Our particular case was we don't really need to be eyeballing that uh, LED trying to figure out what the status is, if it's working properly or not. Just let the unit do what it's supposed to do and you're not gonna have any troubles. Now we do have our trailer hooked up to our tow vehicle. And what I wanna do here is just make sure that my uh, trailer brake controller is working the brakes properly. So we're gonna just move a little bit here and I'm gonna manually do the brakes and I can feel them tugging. So we are in good shape. They're all working properly. Now we just let the controller actually take over everything and it will automatically control sway. Now we are out on the highway here and we've had a few semis passing us up and the whole unit, truck and trailer, just stay as one unit. I don't feel any trailer sway itself, but we do have some wind gusts and the wind gusts aren't moving the trailer, it's just moving the whole vehicle which is a good sign that uh, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So your trailer doesn't just start doing this number and get out of hand. Uh, what ends up happening is as it senses the trailer start to sway, it'll break on one side or the other, depending on which way it's swaying, and it will automatically control that all on its own. You don't have to reach down and hit your manual uh, brake on your brake controller. So it, it is actually working pretty well, like I said, it's working all as one unit and that's the way it should be. You don't want one thing blowing because usually when you get a side wind, it's gonna start that trailer and the side wind will actually, tar the trailer will start uh, swerving on you. And I haven't felt any of that at all. Let's go ahead and talk about the install. The install really isn't that hard. I'd say the hardest part was running the wires back to the axles. Now. On this particular case, we did have an underbelly that we did have to drop down, so that made it a little bit more difficult. But it's actually, once you do that, it is pretty easy to wire up. You are gonna need some extension to your wires, so just keep that in mind when you do purchase this, that you will need some extra wire as well. Now, make sure it is 14 gauge wire because that's what the manufacturer recommends. Now, if you don't want to tackle this at home, check out our deal locator on eTrailer.com. But if you do want to try it yourself, stick around, I'll show you how. 
So we decided on the first cross member on our frame, that's where we're gonna mount it. And we're mounting it up underneath. And if you notice, we had to drop our underbelly. So you may have to do the same thing. What we need to do, this control box has a center here where the red dot is. That is the center of the control box. We need to put that in the center of the trailer. So what I did here, this frame piece here, we went right in the center and it just actually lines up. There's a hole right here that is the center of the trailer. We're going to go ahead and take our box and put it in the center of this beam. Now there is an upside and it does have up arrows on our control box. So just keep that in mind. I don't know what I did. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and take a marker. I am going to mark our holes and then I'm going to pre-drill them. And go ahead and take our box back down and you can see the four dots that's where our mounting point is going to be now you're going to make sure there's nothing on the front side of your frame here because these self tappers will go all the way through now i'm going to take the self tapper and go ahead and thread the holes on each one before i actually mount the box that's just you don't need to but that's just something i like to do I'll just take each one and do the same thing on each hole. Now that we do have those tapped out, we're just going to grab them and go ahead and mount our box. Once we do have the control box mounted, we do have to run two sets of wires down the, uh, underneath the underbelly towards the uh, brakes, and they're gonna come out where the brakes actually come out on the underbelly. Now, I have two of the same color wires here, so basically my blue one is gonna be for my left side brakes or the driver side brakes, and the one that is not and it's just black, that is gonna be my curbside or my passenger side brakes because you have to split these brakes off, otherwise the control box will not work correctly. So our black wires that I mentioned that we ran down, the two black wires, they're gonna pop out where these, this white wire is here, these two sets of white wires. These two sets of white wires are the original wires that run down to our brakes. One's a power wire, which is the one I snipped, and one's a ground. Now, our black wire with our blue tape is going to be our driver's side, and that's going to connect to our black brakes. See, the black one here goes to the left side, and the brown one here goes over to the right side. And how that works is it goes down and actually goes right through the axle to the other side. Now, you're also going to need to run a jumper if you've got a dual axle like we do, you're going to need to run a jumper to catch the rear axle and you're going to wire it the exact same way. So basically you're going to have uh, a, the black wires, you're going to have three and then one of them's going to go up and over to the rear axle. It'll pop out, it'll connect to the black and then the other one again you'll have running through the axle to the other side. Okay, now that we have all of our wires ran that we need ran, we're going to go ahead and connect them. Now, our purple wire is going to go to our left side brakes, which is our blue taped wire here. Those two will go together. Then our pink wire is going to go to our right side brakes, like so. And then we've got a power wire, which is running right up to the battery. It's going to come down and go to this black wire that runs up and connects to our battery. And then the blue wire is for our brakes coming from the tow vehicle. 
and that's what our blue wire is here. So let's go ahead and start making those connections and you're going to want to use um, these weatherproof connections. These are heat, heat shrink so once we put them on we'll heat them up and they'll shrink down and it'll protect them from the elements. So let's go ahead and start with our purple which is our left side. Grab our crimper. Grab our black wire that's marked blue. And we can go ahead and grab our heat gun and shrink that down. Now you're just going to do the same thing with all the other wires. Just make sure they're going to the right points. Now that we've got all the connections made to our control box up underneath the camper, just remember you got to put your underbelly back on and all that. So we do have a couple of wires we still need to hook up. Now looking at these, this LED here, it does come with the wiring and you're gonna to wanna to run it and you can put this and mount this anywhere you'd like. It's just an indicator of what the control box status is. And basically we just bolted it onto the side of the frame here and it's got connections here we'll go ahead and make. It's just a two piece wire, that connection here and you're just gonna put that in till it snaps and that one's good to go. The other connection we did make is our positive wire going to our control box here, and that is hooked right to our battery. This line here is coming from our battery, and that's where we connected our positive. Now our ground, this is our bundle of ground wires here. We're gonna strip this back and go ahead and connect it here. So now that we do have all of our connections made, we can go ahead and hook up to our tow vehicle. But before we do that, I just wanna mention something here that big bundle of wires. I could not get the wire nut off of our, our uh, ground wires here. So what I did, I just went ahead and spliced into it and connected directly to here. Now our battery negative just runs right to our frame here. So this is actually probably a better ground connection anyway. So just keep that in mind. You may have to do the same thing, but let's go ahead and get our tow vehicle. And what we're gonna do is hook up our seven way and then we're going to uh, go ahead and manually do the brake controller and we should get a flickering green light. And if you don't get a flickering green light, there is a troubleshooting guide in the instruction manual on page 10 that will explain what's happening. All right, now we need to go ahead and plug in our seven way to our tow vehicle and go ahead and hit the manual brake override. Should get a green light. And we have a flickering green light. So in our case, we are good to go. Now all we need to do is go ahead and give it a test drive and see what we come up with. Once you did test everything out and everything's functioning properly, this does conclude our installation of the Tucson Trailer Sway Control System. I'm Bruce. Thanks for watching.